Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Cold Emails, Hot Takes. Thomas, it's great to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I said this to you before when we were kind of off camera, but you all have built something so incredible. I've watched literally every episode of the podcast. Um, so I, I know what to expect, and I'm, I'm so excited. Okay, awesome. Let's jump into it. Yeah, for the, for the viewers listening, uh, Thomas is the founder of TKW Digital. He's a cold email expert and was able to land clients such as MIT and the Los Angeles Film School. And he's the only full-time employee of his agency and automates everything else. And uh, in addition to that, he's getting 15 to 20% reply rates on his cold email campaigns on average. This is all stuff we're going to learn more about during this podcast. And then uh, also he sold a company that was doing 30,000 a day right out of college. But we'll talk about that at the end when I learn more about uh, what his mindset is about. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about cold email. Thomas, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Yeah. Um, so we're a lead generation agency, or we started out that way, lead generation through cold email. So the pitch I typically give people is we're effectively replacing any email prospecting that your BDR team is doing. Um, but in the last, I'd say like three months, and we're absolutely at the beginning of this transition is transitioning into an acquisition agency, um, which I kind of coined to mean everything from prospecting to closing to making your, you know, coming in and making your prospecting more efficient. Um, and I've got some I don't quite want to reveal now, um, but it has to do with one to one outreach. Uh, so we're we're in the, the midst of revamping a lot uh, and expanding the company in the next couple of months. Okay, awesome. Uh, Thomas, if you don't mind sharing, what are some crazy results that you've gotten with cold email? Yeah, um, crazy results. I, I think probably the most interesting to me is, you know, consistently getting that that 15 to 20% open rate. Um, I think like a lot of that comes from just being extremely human, um, you know, reaching out to the right people at the right time, which is pretty basic. But um, yeah, I, I, I mean, from what I've seen, not a lot of people doing 50 to 20% in reply rates. Yeah, exactly. Reply rates, guys, that's not open rates. Just to, uh, just to clarify, some people say, hey, like I had 20% open rates. No, no, we're talking about reply rates here. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah that's really interesting. So, you, so you're getting like this 15 to 20% reply rates on average on you cold email campaigns. What are so what is some of the secret sauce that goes into that? I can start off with one that like, I think other people might be doing this, but I haven't seen it. And it increased reply rates by 105% when I tested it out. It's adding. So in your copy, you have your copy, right? Your signature. And if you add at the bottom sent from iPhone, I've had multiple people reply back and say, oh, prospecting on mobile. I really respect that. You know, I'm happy to take some time. Like sent from iPhone is a nice little trick uh, that I can give out. Um, but again, like uh, truthfully, I have not found a lot of value in using AI or outsourcing to personalize the first line. I think you know, people don't really care that you know they live in New York and you may know a good restaurant nearby. I think if you have a really good offer and you're really human about it, um, you can add all the little tricks and personalization and typos, you know, to make it look like you're, you know, just kind of banging this out on the keyboard. You know, if you keep your your emails plain text, which I know instantly advocates for, and you just really speak like a human and you do a really good job at segmentation earlier in the process, you're, it should be no problem to at least get replies saying, tell me more, what is this? Mm -hmm. Maybe a weird question, but like, how do you mean speak like a human? Like, <laughs> right yeah. in, in abstract terms, it makes sense. Everybody can speak like a human, but maybe somebody who's overthinking it or they're looking at the blank page, like how do you go about writing out the cold email that, that sounds like a human being is like actually reaching out to them? Yeah, I, I was really surprised, even with myself, how often, excuse me, how often I would sit down and go, okay, you know, I'm going to bang out this email, and it would come off really salesy. Or even when I thought about it and said, um, you know, don't be salesy, be human, it's st I still was not quite getting there. So what I found is a great trick um, that other people can use is I found one lead. So one lead within all the ones that I pulled that I really liked or was interested in. And I wrote an email as if it was just to them. So I even went in to like, look at their LinkedIn, you know, all this. And again, I didn't factor in personalization as much, um, but I was writing it specifically to them. And then that came out really human. So instead of like, 
hey, John, um, I've got this offer that can 2x your business within 90 days. Would you like to hear more? You know, now I know the business. So I'm saying, hey, John, just came across your company um, and thought this might be interesting. Typically, we work with brands like yours and are able to, you know, we were able to increase their their meetings by 30%. Let me know if you're interested in that and we can chat next week. Like that's a much, mm -hmm. you know, when you're writing one-to-one, -one, you can get much more personal and it kind of brings down that guard of like needing to sell all the time. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a really good one. Like just from the lead list, you just pick out one, you take a closer look at like any random lead from that from that list that you uh, that you built and then you just speak directly to them. If you were to send just an individual email to them, how would you phrase it how would you what would you say or, or write in there exactly and then when you're bringing it to scale obviously you do want to make those personalization tweaks about my favorite one to do is um you know we just help someone in your state or your region or something like that um so you do want to bring it out and you do want to do a little bit of like scale you know personalization at scale but it really helps us start off just writing that one-to-one -one so you just get that personal tone okay gotcha and other thing I wanted to ask you about, which is really interesting, you you landed some really big clients, but you mentioned to me that you're the only full time employee, and that you've automated yeah. everything else in your agency. Like, what does that look like? How how do you even do that? Yeah. Um. So it might be interesting to your audience. I I program as a hobby, but I would never get paid for it, and I cannot just apply it to any solution. So this advice may be interesting, just because I think there's a lot of people out there who say, "Well, I'm not a programmer. You know, I can't just like." spin up uh you know some python to make the api work um but it's really all api driven i mean a lot of what we do we we work with like really powerful tools like integramat um or it's called make now i believe uh make uh zapier is incredibly powerful and then honestly i outsource to some developers when you know I, I just don't think it can be done with those two platforms so like back when i was personalizing emails more i outsourced to a developer you know, as a one-time thing. And he wrote a sheet that um, I think a lot of people are doing this at this point, but back then it was, you know, pull, um, if I just provide email addresses, it's going to pull in all the information from, you know, scrape the web for LinkedIn, Apollo, whatever, pull in all that information. And then it's going to take check, check GPT. We'll use those inputs to like output a personalized line. Right. And that's probably pretty antiquated now, but it's a great example of, I was willing to put some money and some time in up front with a developer to have something that was seamless where I just paste in the emails and bang, I've got, you know, whatever, 10,000 first lines in a matter of a couple of minutes. Okay, cool. And any other automations that, that you can talk about that help you like automate the day-to-day -day in the agency or the service delivery in the agency? Yeah, I use... Um... I use the, an agency that that works with Make. So um, actually, I think I forget his name. I think it was Nick uh, on your podcast talked about using Make as well to automate some of these crazy menial tasks. So like when I get a new client, I have a whole onboarding checklist of things down to like setting up things in Google folders. So similar to what I did with a developer, I paid this agency for something a little more comprehensive. And so they get to the point where you know, when I have a new client, when I mark that client as new client in Monday, immediately in my Google Drive appears, you know, creates a bunch of folders, puts in a bunch of checklists that I've already templatized in Google Drive. So I'd say, again, honestly, leaning on people who are, are better than you at what you do to get that setup going, but with a mindset of in perpetuity, it's going to be automated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's say a new client comes in, there's all these automations. It's pretty streamlined, but you still have to write the copy for each client, right? How, what is what is your creative process on creating the compelling copy that brings in positive replies? How, how do you go about that? Because I know a lot of people, or at least a good amount of people have, have like writer's block. They're not sure, okay, what should I say there? How do I write copy that, that gets a response? Yeah, so um, this is like an even bigger, like, mindset thing too, but I've kind of applied it to writing copy and it can just be scaled to so many things in your business. Um, a, starting in that one-to-one -one place that I mentioned earlier and saying, hey, let's just like chunk this down and just, just do this one thing, just write an email to one person and then we can kind of scale that out. Um, but the other thing is, again, like part of writing a good email is just banging your head at it over and over and over. So when I write an email, like I used to start and go, I'd write half a sentence and go, oh, that, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, I need to come at it from another thing. Um, and now it's very systematic. So, you know, I have, I have a spreadsheet 
Um, I write each, of, I start by writing each of the hooks that I want at the top. So like four or five different hooks. I think a couple of different people have, have used a similar template. And then from there, I just start writing and it looks like crap. Uh, you know, the first couple attempts, it looks bad, but I'll just, I'm saying, just get your thoughts on it and put them on the spreadsheet. And then you're going to look back and go, okay, how could this be better? How could this be better? Walk away from it from a day, for a day, come back. How can it be better? Um, so there's really like no sauce other than being organized and just do something again, like to the bigger mindset piece, anything I've ever achieved in, in business or anything was because I just did something and I made a ton of mistakes and I wasn't scared to make mistakes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Just like looking looking at the blank page and just starting to writing, like uh, starting to write, like removing those filters or removing the, the high, the two high standards, right? You can, you can write drunk, but edit sober. You can just start right, writing yeah. and try to get something on the pay on paper, at least, and you can edit later. Yeah. Uh, and then you go back and you start using the same framework, the same hooks across clients. Cause they make sense. So this thing that you started with at the first time that you're saying this took for, uh, you know, I, you're thinking about how sustainable it is. I did the same thing. You write the copy and let's say the first copy you ever write for any client takes three days and it takes eight hours, you know, and you're like, oh, this is not sustainable. I cannot put in 24 hours on copy every time. Right. But then the second time, you know, now it's like three hours because you really got it down. And then by the time you end up doing it, you're like, okay, at this point, now I've basically like outsourced the copy to someone who's really good at it with these parameters so that I know that it's really good when it comes back. So again, okay. just banging your head in the wall is so important. Okay, got it. And so let's say, you know, you're launching campaigns, you're getting positive replies back. How do you turn these interested leads into an actual meeting? How, how do you go about it? Yeah, so that's when you zero in and you really go one-to-one. -one. Like th this is not a part I automate. I automate basically up to the point where somebody says, hey, let's chat, send more. Um, I will say I've heard a, a bunch of times on your podcast of people saying, uh, just get a response or, you know, send, uh, can I send over more information? And they say, yes, I've tried that and, and it does work, but I, I really find that again, if you can get them to just say yes, like you can kind of give them a nugget and then say, would love to hop on the phone for fit. I've been testing between 15 and five minutes. Um, but people are really responsive to that. So if somebody comes in and they're saying, you know, let's say they're from a, um, I don't know, like audio visual company. And they're saying, yeah, sounds interesting. Send me more info. You can kind of look at the company and go, okay, well, here's this little bit of value, um, but would love to hop on the phone for like five minutes next week if you if you have a minute. Um, and, and somewhat tangentially, I've also found that it sounds so counterintuitive, but the more kind of lackadaisical and open your replies are, again, like you're going to feel more human and they're not going to feel sold to. So a lot of times I'll say to people, yeah, let me know. Let me know if you have 15 minutes next week. Tuesday works for me. You know, like that. That's just kind of like, ah, eh, I got stuff going on. And if you can make Tuesday, that's great. And it, and they end up going, oh, okay, great. Instead of you saying, here's my Calendly. Like, any any, any chance we can hop on the phone like that? That they're mm -hmm. like, goodness, I'm being sold to. This is uncomfortable. They don't like it. Yeah, it goes back to what you said in the beginning with with the human approach. Uh, like if you were actually talking to somebody. That you know, how would you actually, what words would you use? How would you interact with them? Yeah. And it is shockingly difficult to hit that perfect medium of like being human. It's really hard to be human when you like have your sales hat on, you have your business hat on. Like it's really hard and not being so lackadaisical that, right. Like, again, you're like, yeah, it would be chill if we hopped on the phone. Like then you just come off yeah, really silly. Much. So, yeah. So it's like, yeah, I've seen people like write copy like that. that would be like. Yeah, I'd be like dope if we got on the phone. I'm like, mm -hmm. not getting on the phone with you at that point. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. You also said like, well, you give them a, maybe a little bit of in, information in uh, in that reply, but not too much. So they still say, hey, let me, like, instead of like going for the information, all that, let me just jump on a quick call. And you said also like 15 to five minute calls. Do you, do you actually like offer five minute calls or 10 minute calls? Or do you just offer that range so it looks uh, less like a commitment? So I will do 15 minute calls sometimes, but frankly, I'll usually do like, yeah, I'll say I'll AB test five or 15 and then I'll just put 30 minutes on the calendar. And honestly, if they say something, you know, it's like, okay, that the 30 minutes is the default. I don't need to explain this, but you know, I'm like, oh, my fault. Just pull the meeting. Like it doesn't end up being sneaky or backhanded or anything. You're just putting time on yeah. the calendar and 
it's fine if not okay okay yeah you're basically asking for a spot on the calendar whether that's 10 or 17 yeah. 23 minutes it's not right, a big deal right. I mean, you have something to of value to offer anyway and exactly. um, yeah that's, that's a good one I, I keep that one in mind and um cool yeah, quick, uh, quick intermission. So let's switch to a couple, a cold email rapid fire question, which is uh, kind of a ritual here on the, on the podcast. Uh, are you ready it. for a couple of rapid fire questions? Let's do it. I've been playing it. Okay, awesome. So what are your favorite B2B data sources? Um, big fan. Honestly, Apollo is so tried and true. I really like Apollo. Really like Ocean. Um, I'm Full disclosure, I met with Ocean. I have not purchased the product yet, but I'm, it's probably just going to happen later this month because they just blew my mind with like their spin on finding leads. And then really, again, like I would highly encourage people to find a developer. You, you know, they can use something as simple as like Appify. Um, if people don't know what that is, it's, it's basically people built a bunch of API tools um, that can be no code, or you can get a developer to really enhance their capabilities. But I would really tell people to think creatively and get a developer. And we'll talk mindset later, but it's if if you're using Apollo and everyone is using Apollo, your business has no competitive advantage. So I would highly recommend finding something that, you know, nobody, you have to find something nobody else is doing, or you are literally just going to do the same thing everyone else is. Yeah. So, so with Appify, would that be like a scraper or something like that? Yeah, Appify is really cool. I mean, yeah, so there are scrapers on Appify. Um, like a good example is like using... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of like a really good example I've been using with a developer recently. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so like real estate investing, I don't want to give away like too much here, but you know, if you're looking at like commercial real estate, um, there are scrapers that will scrape like forums where people are very interested in commercial real estate, um, you know, businesses that are interested in commercial real estate. So just like finding, Appify is basically the conduit between uh, websites that have the people and the information you want and you who you know need who does not want to extract them one by one by going to someone's profile. So yeah, it's scraping okay. like ninety nine percent of the time. Okay, gotcha. All right, next next rapid fire question. That wasn't that that much of a rapid fire question. I had to yeah, sorry, up, not rapid. And, uh, my bad. And um, what's your favorite call to action in a cold email? Yeah, um, I'm always I'm always big on um, you know, would you be open to chat next week? Again, like next week really pushes it off for them. I think chat is like, you know, especially if you're marketing like Americans, like is a very like general, yeah, yeah, let's just chat, like see what's open to it. So I like that. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite follow-up messaging? Um, really, really short stuff. Actually, I'll give away this line. I really like this line. Um, a lot of times I'll follow up and say, hey, um, hey, I emailed you last week and just want to be persistent because I, I really think there's a good fit here. And I really like that line of like, I want to follow up only because I think there's a really good fit here. It makes them feel like very special, but you don't need to personalize that line at all. And then kind of end it with like, are you free for 15 minutes next Tuesday to chat? Okay, sounds very human to me. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are some of your favorite subject lines? Uh, best one I've ever used is their name and dash your name. My favorite one. Okay. Good. And let's go back to the more um, open-ended question. questions. Uh, how do you scale a cold email? So let's say you're going from one or two positive replies a day to getting 10 plus positive replies a day. How do you go about that? Like you, you see you have proof of concept, campaigns are working, one or two positive replies a day, something's coming in. How do you scale from there? Volume in every aspect. Um, lead generation is awesome because it's it's really scalable um, with the same infrastructure. And I'm really big on this. And like any job I've worked for a company, I'm huge on get in there, like, you know, what is it? Move fast and break things, right? Um, so you to your point in your scenario, you've figured out how to get responses. You've figured out good, good copy. You've figured out a system that can get you two responses a day. My response would be literally just scale what you're doing and scale what you're doing until you see diminishing returns. You get five responses a day, you get eight responses a day. Now you're starting to scale, but you're still getting eight responses a day. You know, it's it's a sign of like one of two things. That market is saturated or what you're doing, you know, doesn't work at a scale that large for whatever reason. So uh, it's just volume. 
Mm -hmm. and, and how many cold emails do you send per user? Side question. Yeah, I send three. Um, I think there's a lot of, I mean, and I'm not against this. I frankly should try it a little bit more, but there's a lot of people who will send like eight, nine cold emails. I think my thing is I see a dramatic drop off, not in response, but I see a dramatic drop off in people coming qualified leads and people closing after that third email. So I think the data is a little interesting and possibly misleading in the fact that people say, well, if you do nine emails, like look at my response rate, there's still people responding in email nine. I would challenge you to go all the way down the pipeline and look at like, okay, how many people are converting into paid customers after that third email or fourth email? Yeah. Yeah, we've been seeing that too. Like, and we also did a big analysis on like 32 million cold emails and the sequences. And we've seen that like 94% of all replies come in within the first three steps. Um, oh, yeah. So we've been seeing that too. And, and in terms of um, the cold emails per email account, like how much you send, how much volume you're sending per email account, like how, how much are you sending? Yeah, I'm doing 25 warm ups and then 25 outreach. It's pretty standard, okay. but yeah, I'm. I'm on the safe side and then three accounts per Google workspace. And I actually need to try Instantly's new feature um, and get on Microsoft and Zoho and see, see yeah. if we can match sending. Um, Cause yeah, that's super exactly. cool. And yeah, the provider matching. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You, you staying on that and on, on the, on the very safe range uh, there with, with 25, but uh, it ensures longevity for sure. And yeah. Um, great. Yeah. Uh, as a last question, you know, I'd like to learn, uh, more about your mindset. You know, I, I know that you started a company when you left college. That was a, a top 100 Amazon store. Uh, you had yeah. your first exit. At that point, your company was doing $30,000 a day. Um, how did you pull that off? Like, what's your entrepreneur mindset to make that happen? Or maybe like other people listening who, who want to make something similar happen? Yeah. Um, so, important point of clarification. We were not doing 30,000 a day consistently every single day. Um, that said, like we did have $30,000 days. That's actually what spurred me to quit the job I had that I'll explain. Um, but yeah, just point of interest. I don't want to misrepresent myself, um, but we were doing well. And we yeah, were I mean, it's still very impressive. Like even, yeah, even yeah. if it's like from time to time hitting 30K a day, that would be like everybody's dream. But yeah, yeah. I, totally, I don't, yeah. Yeah. And those are, and like, remember those are top line numbers. Our margins were, I think like between like 30 and 40%, which is still very healthy. Um, but I just want to put it in perspective because, and it had nothing to do with how you present it and more that, you know, sometimes those like facts of success get so lost in people being like, I did X a day. So mm -hmm. I do want to put in perspective. I was not just like rolling in dough, uh, you know, like crazy. I was working my butt off and so thin margins. Um, but yeah, the, the story is interesting. Um, I think because at the end of my at the end of my time in college, like I was, I, I really like sneakers. I really like fashion. I still do. Um, and I was, you know, buying old sneakers and flipping them. I think it's like what everyone in high school or college like does at some point. There's nothing remarkable about that. But what I noticed was that um, towards the end of my senior year, I was like, the market has like one of two ways and two, um, you know, the, one of two sections for sneakers. You can either totally overpay, but you sh you're sure they're legitimate, or you can totally underpay and pay some random guy on Big Cartel or Shopify, and you better hope that they're real and you may never know. So like there was, and, and there was this middle ground and, and the branding over here was so bad and the branding over here was so amazing. And I was like, okay, I have some marketing, some design skills, you know, et cetera. Um, I'm going to go sit in the center and I'm going to go find the right suppliers who I know they're legitimate. They can give me a receipt, but... I'm not going to mark them up as high and I'm going to have great marketing. So I did that and it was just fun. Like, you know, I was just messing around and the site was fine. I was doing all right. And then like, I don't know, maybe three months after I started, someone from a rep from Amazon reached out and said, Hey, we, we saw your website. Like we really like it. And I'd assume the branding probably did that. You know, would you like to sell on Amazon? And I was like, can anyone sell on Amazon? And they said, no, right now our footwear category is invite only. So I can even set it up for you, man. Just send me the SKUs on the website and I'll set it up. And so an important part of this for a poor college student like me was everything I was doing was just in time inventory. So I would put up the sneakers because I knew I could get them. And it was basically a game of, I put them up for this price because I know, or I'm hedging that I can get it at this price. There's my margin. So we set it up on a Thursday. I thought really like nothing of it. 
And then on Sunday, I was like, oh, I should check that, see if it went up. And um, between Thursday and Sunday, I did like $40,000 in revenue. And I was like, oh, oh nice. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And at the time I was working some like crappy job as a real estate assistant, you know, um, it was nothing. And so I walked in there on Monday. I was like, yeah, I, I, I quit. I can't do this. Right? I got to go home and take care of all this. And I did that for like two and a half years. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought the story was interesting, but to get your question about mindset, frankly, um, a lot, like there was a lucky break and that Amazon reached out um, because my branding was good. But I think like a lot of it was really, again, like I think it's so important to just get in the weeds and make a ton of mistakes. I was someone who was so worried about making exactly the right move or not messing up or doing it right. And there's so much that can be said for just doing it in an educated guess. And it's the same with cold email for people that are watching for cold email. You know, when you're writing that copy or setting up those emails or warming up those domains or whatever, you might be thinking, well, if I send out these emails and, and they don't work and people say, no, well, there's 10,000 people that I'll never get back. And if I just wrote better emails than, and waited, then maybe I could get to them. It literally will never work like that. You have to just send emails, just press send, do your mm -hmm. best, learn from the next one. I promise there are millions of businesses out there that, that want to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Just take action. And also if cold email is like the, 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 the upside is very high, but the downside is very low. Like the cost is low. You're not, you're not taking any risks. Even exactly. if somebody doesn't like your cold email, they'll forget your name in a minute. Uh, they so will. And you can email them again in campaigns. 30 days. Yeah, you can email them again in 30 days. I guarantee you 95% of these people won't remember they ever said no to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Thomas, man, it was awesome to, to have you on the show, learning from you, and uh, you dropped a lot of value. And for people who want to learn uh, more from you uh, or work with you, where should they go? Yeah, so uh, if you want to work with me, uh, tkwdigital.io uh, is our website. Again, we're revamping it, so it's pretty minimal right now. Also trying to get more started on social media. Um, I locked down my personal Twitter, but I started one for the company that's a little more business focused. Um, and that's just TKW Digital, but we're in the early, early, early days. I, I don't know how much I really love social media anymore, but I know like Twitter, some of this is it's it's necessary for connecting with people. So um, I'm happy to do it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put all the links into the description, tkwdigital.io. Uh, you can click there and check out, talk to Thomas. And yeah, man, thanks thanks for your time again. Uh, Learn some interesting strats, especially the one with, you know, like if you're reaching out to people, just keep it, keep it as human as possible. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, talk to you soon. Um, bye.